What's up everybody? Welcome to my first Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to show you how to take a image that is on a white background, cut out the subject, and keep the shadow for a transparent export. And I'm gonna do an action for you. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and we have our example image loaded up. This case, we are working with this taco and we want to cut out this taco and put it on a white background. <clears throat> now there's tons of different ways that we can do this, but one of the ways that I think is gonna be best for this particular image and the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is because of the shadow here. I wanna keep the shadow because my goal with this image at the end of the day is to give the client a PNG file that has that shadow intact. Now, there are a few different ways that we can do this, but let's explore a few of them and let's explore some problems that we might run into with some of them. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new solid color fill layer. I'm just gonna make this a white layer. And I want that specifically because I want to have a background that I can work with uh, and kind of see what the client will see with that PNG when we're done. So, I'm going to double click on my background layer and hit okay to unlock that layer. There's other ways to do it, but that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna move this layer up top. So now we have our original image with a background underneath it. Now, if we went ahead and we selected this image, right? And let's go ahead and I'm just gonna select the subject here. Let's go select subject. There's plenty of ways to cut this out. I'm doing this really simply and quickly so you guys can see some of the problems we have. Now, if I hit okay here, uh, let's output this to a new layer with a layer mask. So if I hit okay here, you think that it'll, it's all right, right? We have our taco there and we have our white background. Now the problem of course is that the shadow is entirely gone, okay? Now, let's say I wanted to keep some of that shadow in. I've done this with a layer mask, so I could, let's say I wanna paint in some of that shadow. Okay, great, painting that in. Now, now we're presented with a problem where that shadow, uh, it's, it's not on a pure white piece of paper, so the shadow's not gonna look very natural, right? That looks terrible, it does not look good at all. We could of course play with the feathering and and you know get some really nice soft feathering happening here, blurring that mask. There's definitely different ways we could do that. But this also presents us with another problem. Let's say I wanted to put this on a red background, right? Let's go red. Okay, here is our problem, right? That white background is still going to be visible because it was shot on a white piece of paper. And uh, in here where we have the pure shadow showing through, none of that red is visible. So that's not ideal, right? This would look terrible unless we were putting it on a white background. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this image and separate out the shadow data se completely separately and make it transparent. So let's go back to the beginning. All right, back to our picture of our taco. Uh, I have already created my selection. Like I said, I'm gonna reload that selection and the first thing I'm gonna do now that we're back at the beginning is I'm going to create a copy of my background layer by just dragging it down to the new layer button. And with this selection made, I'm going to hit my mask button and create a brand new mask. So now I have my street taco with no shadow. That's very important. The shadow was not selected here, just the taco, just the product itself. Uh, I have that product on a separate layer. So I'm going to hold down command and click on the mask thumbnail to reload my selection. And this time I'm going to invert that selection. So uh, command shift I or con control shift I on windows, or you can always go up to select inverse. So now with my selection inverted, I'm gonna go back down to my background layer and I'm going to create a copy of what is selected. In this case, I'm not gonna do a brand new layer like I did before uh, and a mask. I'm just gonna hit command J and now I have a layer with just that selection. So eliminating our background, we have two layers. We have the product layer and we have the everything but the product layer. Okay, great. So here we're presented with another option, right? So what I could do is I could do a solid color layer 
and I could say, all right, cool, I want the solid color to be a beautiful uh, mustard color. Wow, beautiful mustard, great. Then I could take this, this layer that has just the shadow information, and I could say, all right, let's set that blend mode to multiply, right? Hey, that seems like it worked okay, right? But now here's our problem with this, with this method. So if I went this route and I wanted to export this without this mustard color in the background, it's impossible. Multiply works with the data below it to output a final pixel value. In this case, we don't want that. We do not want to have anything here. We want transparency. So let's get back to where we were. So with our product, with our shadow layer and our product layer, we're going to create a new solid color fill layer. So new solid color, and we're going to create a white solid color layer. And with that, I'm going to put that down below the shadow layer. So our shadow layer has white now underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and merge these two layers. All right. Now we're going to, I'm going to name the shadow helper. Perfect. Now we're going to go with a <clears throat> new solid color layer. And this time this is gonna be our shadow. So we're gonna make a black solid color layer. So now what we've got is we have a the product on top of a black layer and the black layer is showing everything. And then we have our little shadow helper. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this shadow helper layer and we're going to apply it to this layer. So. Clicking on the mask here, I have my four corners selected on this bottom part. I'm going to go to image, apply image. I'm going to go to shadow helper and I'm going to go to invert, okay? Now what we've done, I'm gonna delete my shadow helper layer, is we have the shadow on its own separate layer, right? So if we look at that mask again uh, and remembering that a mask, wherever there is black, it is uh, not showing the contents of the layer and wherever it is white, it is showing the contents of the layer. Uh, now this is kind of a, a weird backward situation because where it is white is where the shadow is and where it is black, there is no shadow. There's nothing, right? So <clears throat> this is just our shadow information on its own separate layer. Now, one of the problems we run into is that on these sections on the outside, right? Because this wasn't a pure white image to begin with, uh, it's not going to invert to pure black either. We have this funky kind of a dark gray or this light gray over here. And we don't want that because what would happen if we had that is uh, the image would have a, a, a border around it, right? We want to have it so that it's a nice smooth shadow and it fades to absolutely nothing. So we're going to do that by adjusting our curves. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my, I'm going to, first off, I'm going to reshow my other layers so that I can have something to look at. And I'm also going to create a solid color underneath this of pure white. So we have something to look at. And so now we have our background layer, our shadow layer and our product layer. So with the shadow layer, uh, with this mask selected, I'm going to go to image adjustments and curves. Now, because we have that selected, we are doing the curves on just that masks alpha data. So, uh, we want to make it so that those areas that were dark gray, in this case, they live here on the curve. We want to make it so those are pure black. So if I drag this in, now we're getting to pure white, but we have a little funky thing happening, right? So we have this funky edge to the shadow. So we really need to be careful and play with this curves layer. So I'm going to put this right about the middle and then I'm going to drag this down. So we have a nice smooth transition there. And of course it might brighten up that shadow a little bit, but that's okay. That's totally fine. That's what we want. Um, and we can always tweak that later on as we go. So here is my adjustment on that curves layer. Okay, great. So if I hold down alt and click on here now, now we look a lot more, we have a kind of a taco eclipse happening here. <laughs> uh, but now it looks a lot, a lot cleaner, right? There's none of that gray area. Nothing is looking, um, everything uh, looks overall very clean. We have a nice stark contrast there. So gonna go back and show everything again. We're gonna go through our layers. We have our background layer. We have our shadow layer. And now we have our taco layer. So because we've gone this route, we can hide this background layer and that transparency exists with the shadow still existing. So let's say I go and I put a, another colored background on here. Perfect, that shadow is gonna retain. If I export like this, 
perfect, the transparency will retain in a PNG format, and the shadow will remain as well. If I wanted to, let's say, put this background here. Um, great. We still have the shadow coming through. So by going this route, you have that benefit of keeping the transparency, separating out the shadow, and being able to export that shadow and its transparency. Now, I have gone ahead and created an action to make this a lot easier. And here is how to use that action. So we're gonna go back to the beginning one more time. Uh, here is our beginning food example. I'm going to load my selection. Again, you can select it however you want to do it. Now with my layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and load my action. Perfect. That action pauses when you get to the curve step so you can tweak this curve to how you like it. Let's go ahead and let's put that curve kind of how I had it before. Perfect. Okay, great. And now we are all done. We have our background, we have our shadow, and we have our product. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope that this helps you and I hope that that action helps you. I'll have a link to download it. So thanks. Peace out.